Hi friends, my name is Jessica and in today's video we're going to talk about how to get 100 on the math portion of the ATIT's exam. And what makes me qualified to talk about this? Well, I actually did get 100 on the math portion of the ATIT's exam. And I'm here to help you do the same because I know that the ATIT's exam is a major obstacle between you and your dream of getting into nursing school. And it's my goal to help people get into nursing school because we need more nurses in this world. So let's talk about it. Let's get into it. In this video, we'll talk about how to prepare, what you need to know, what to study, how to study, and really just creating a plan for success. The math portion of the exam consists of two sections, algebra and numbers and measurements and data. The first thing you need to understand is the actual exam. The ATIT's seven science portion of the exam consists of two sections, algebra and numbers, and measurements and data. So in the algebra and numbers section, you're gonna be tested on things like decimals, fractions, percentages, converting those three, calculations, algebraic equations, estimations, word problems, ratios, creating equations, and finding the slope on a graph. For the measurements and data section, you will need to understand how to interpret tables, evaluating data in tables, converting values, geometry, statistics, correlating planes, and converting. So the second thing you need to do is to get resources. You need to figure out what resources work best for you. So here are my recommendations. There are lots of books on the ATIT's exam. However, personally, I found them to be very vague. So when I was taking my exam, this led to me finding outside resources. And this honestly just took a ton of time researching. I remember feeling like I wished there was just a packet of information that told me exactly what I needed to know and showed me how to do it. So I did this. I took a bunch of time and put together a bunch of resources to help show you guys exactly what you need to know and walk through it together to actually teach you how to solve these different types of math problems. This is why I personally think the best resources is the ATIT 7 math portion course. And I will link that down below so you guys can check it out. It's really a package of everything you need to know with video lectures, supplemental PDFs with math problems. There's over 400 and it shows you exactly what the concepts are, how to solve those types of equations, and then you can work through them with the PDF, which has an answer key that shows you how to solve them. I really wanted to create something to help you thrive on the ATIT's exam. This really helps to take the guesswork out of finding resources and materials you need to do well. Additionally, if you want more than 400 practice problems, I also offer a Quizlet deck, which is practice problems with answers, and you can do those on the go right on your phone Phone, you have access to those decks. Uh, just a nice resource to have if you'd like some additional material that can be paired with the modules in the course. But you know what's best for you, so identifying what resources you want to use to study is step one of studying for the ATIT's exam. The third most important thing to know about the ATIT's math portion of the exam is the layout. So we've gotten you familiar with the different topics, but you also need to know how many questions you'll be tested on and the amount of time you'll be able to test. So let's take a look at the ATIT 7 math course overview video which discusses an overview of the exam layout. Hello and welcome to the ATIT 7 math course. In this course we're going to go over everything you need to know for the ATIT 7 math portion of the exam. I was able to get 100 on this portion and you guys can too if you understand all the concepts we're going to cover in this course. So this module is a welcome and overview. We're going to go over the math portion of the ATIT 7, different types of questions that you might see, and some tips and tricks that I have for you guys as you're going through this course. So let's get into it. So the ATIT 7 math portion course is going to consist of 10 modules covering algebra and numbers, measurements and data, you're going to get a lecture for each module. You're going to get PowerPoint slides in a PDF format. You will have a module quiz, and there are over 430 practice problems with an answer key that shows you how to solve them. 
On the ATIT 7 math section of the exam, you're going to get 18 questions on numbers and algebra, and you're going to get 16 questions on measurements and data. And there are a bunch of different topics within each of these categories, which you will be able to see in the course at the title slide. It will say down at the bottom if it is a numbers and algebra topic or a measurements and data topic. So your total questions on the ATIT 7 math section is going to be 38 questions, but only 34 are going to count towards your score, and there will be four unscored questions. These are usually questions that they're testing out if they want to put on future exams or things like that. And you will have 57 minutes to complete these 38 questions. So here's a little tip while you're going through this course. There is an app you can get on your iPhone that is free. It's called Photo Math. And if you take a picture of a math problem, it will show you how to solve it step by step. So as you're doing the over 430 practice problems that this course offers on the different module topics, if there's anything that you're super confused about or that you just are like, I understand this topic, but I don't know how they solved this. You can use this app to, you just pretty much scan the problem and it will show you exactly how to solve it. So that could be really helpful if there's just a question you're kind of tripped up on and you're not sure how exactly it got solved. That's kind of a helpful tip. So use these with your worksheets. And this is again the app, Photo Math. So let's go over now the types of questions you will see on the exam going to have your basic multiple choice question where you have a question and you have four or five answers and you choose which one is the correct answer. You will then also have alternative items. There are four types. So we have multiple select items, also known as select all that apply. We have a supply the answer question. So this will be like a blank question, like you'll have a question with a blank box where you write in the answer. We'll have hotspot items where you will point out a specific hotspot and we'll have an ordered response type of question. So let's go over those. So your multiple select items, drag me over, uh, there, these will be presented with a list of four or more possible answers to a question and more than one may be correct. There will be a note on these questions that say select all that apply. And to answer the questions correctly, you have to select all the answers. There's no partial credit. So we have over here, just like a sample question. So ATIT 7 science section includes select all that apply. So we know it does include human anatomy and physiology. It does include biology, chemistry, and scientific reasoning. So you would select all of these. A great technique for select all that apply questions is make it a true or false question. So we would look at this and be like, ATIT science section includes human anatomy and physiology, true or false. If it's true, we check it off. If it's false, we leave it blank. And same with the rest of the answers. So that is a good technique to use when answering multiple select items. Then we have a supply the answer items. So these questions require you to provide the answer or fill in the blank. It could be text or numerical values. So we can just see here 10 times three, we would write 30 in the box and then move on to the next question. So now this is called a hotspot item. Let's move me over here. So for hotspot items, it's going to include an image with two to five clickable areas. And you're required to click on the area that the image identified as the correct response. So where would you find the aortic valve? So we have our four hotspots here. And after you take this course, or maybe you already know, but the answer would be right here is the aortic valve. So this would be where we click this purple, and that would be how we answer the hotspot question. Then we have an ordered response item. For ordered response items, these questions require you to place a set of response options in the correct order. You drag between four to six response options from a box on the left, which would be here, to a box on the right. And these questions um, have to be answered in the correct order. There's no partial credit. So you're going to get a list 
and this is your unordered side. So in what order does the blood flow through the heart once it leaves the lungs? Here are our unordered responses, and then we would drag and drop them into the correct order. And then the last tip is that you want to plan for success. You want to give yourself an adequate amount of time to study for the exam. I highly recommend printing out a calendar and allotting yourself an amount of time that will allow you to study. I get questions often to my email asking, do you think a month is enough time? Do you think two months is enough time? What do you think is the accurate amount of time? And to be honest, it could be as minimal as if you're just studying for the math portion, you could study in a week or you could study in three months. It just depends. Do you have an hour a day? Do you have five hours a day? And also what is your attention span? So if you know you can get in a good four hours of studying a day and maybe you're off from school and work and you have that time, then absolutely you could most likely do it in a week. If we look at the ATIT's math portion course, there are 10 modules and each lecture is around 10 to 30 minutes. So you could do a module a day with the corresponding practice problems and be done in 10 days. So it just depends the amount of time that you have. But whatever your amount of time is, chart it out and then pick what you're going to do on those specific days to get your studying done in that allotted amount of time. I always like to give yourself a couple days extra. You also want to make sure that you're practicing stress reducing techniques. A little bit of anxiety is good because it helps us concentrate and it actually helps us do better on an exam. When a problem arises is when we have such severe anxiety that we can't clearly think and that is not good. And in order to reduce that anxiety, what I recommend is some deep belly breathing before the exam. I always do this before I take an exam. And I know some people might be like, that's ridiculous, that doesn't work but let's look at it from a psych perspective. When you do deep belly breathing, you activate something called your vagus nerve, which actually helps lower your heart rate, lower your blood pressure, and it really will help you relax. So 10 deep belly breaths right before your exam can really do wonders to help reduce anxiety. Also, something else that can help with anxiety is just reminding yourself that you have prepared adequately for this exam. You have done everything you can do before walking into this exam to do well. Don't let your negativity bias take a hold of you with all those negative thoughts. Just remind yourself of the actions you've taken and the steps you've done in order to be successful. And remember, if you prepare adequately, you're going to do well in the exam and being nervous is normal. I know you guys can do this and I'm here to help along the way. So make sure to check out those resources down below so you can be successful on your ATIT's math portion of the exam. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.